Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are welcome in this place. Come on, get your Bible. Get your Bibles. And let's study the word of God together. Come on in. To crucify the flesh, magnify the Holy Spirit. Welcome, welcome, Daniel. Good to see you on. Eddie Fields, good to see you on. Come on and walk with me on this journey as we study the Word of God together. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. You're welcome. You are welcome. Talking about the Holy Spirit is welcome in this place. Is the Holy Spirit welcome in your place where you live, where he so graciously has given you, given you the strength to go to college or giving you the strength to, if you're not a college graduate, giving you the strength to have a roof over your head because so many do not have a roof over their heads. We see people on the side of the street. You say, well, some of them don't want to work. Well, we're going to continue to pray. Amen. I tell you, I thank God. Hallelujah. We just have to learn to crucify this flesh because this flesh is a mess. It wants to do what it wants to do, when it wants to do it, how it wants to do it. All of us been guilty. I see the halos over your head. You, you, you never have struggled with this old flesh. Well, I have. <laughs> and the Bible said we overcome by our testimony. So, you know, God is the judge. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank God for you, you and you. And we hope that more will get on tonight. But I thank God for being back this Tuesday. Uh, I tell you, some that old stomach virus tried to get a hold of me. And I tell you, I slept. And had to rest. You know, your body will let you know. I believe it's Christ. He let us know when it's time to rest. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray that you had a wonderful day in the Lord. I pray that you just have given him the honor, the glory. Say, Lord, I thank you. I pray that you get in the habit of saying, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way in my right mind, having the activity of my limbs. Because, you know, it was one morning I got up and I couldn't walk. I was holding on to things. And God brought me through brain surgery. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm, I just got approved for my disability. But you know what? He brought me through. And I get tired sometimes, but I am ready. I enjoy studying the Word because I was wondering. I said, God, am I going to still be able to study the Word of God with your people? And I thank God. He is such a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. We're going to be looking at the miracles that He has worked uh back in over 10,000 years ago uh with his disciples when he chose his 12 disciples we've been studying the book of uh Matthew so let me get my glasses let's pray and let's get ready to get in the word of God father God in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to study your word with your people. I thank you for Brother Eddie Fields and Daniel Neal on tonight and those who will be coming on and those who will look at this after 
it, we, we go off and the, those on the prayer line, Lord, they could have been doing something else with their time, but they chose to stop by to study the word of God with us tonight. Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise God for you alone is worthy to pray, be praised. Take control of every entity of me, less of me and all of you work through this available vessel. I humble myself before you father, King of King, Lord of Lords. I thank you. Lord, you said in your word in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge you and you will direct thy path. Lord, I acknowledge you. Take complete control of every entity of me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. I hope you have your Bibles. And you can follow along with me. And as I previously stated, we're in the book of Matthews and we have gotten to chapter eight. So the topic of discussion tonight, Jesus, the miracle worker, he is a miracle worker. The question I would like for you to ponder, if you are dealing with a chronic illness, do you really believe that God can heal you? If you are dealing with a critical, a uh, 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 chronicle, help me, Holy Spirit, illness, do you really believe that God can heal you? And as I previously stated, Matthew's chapter eight. But before I, but before I go into eight, for our review, we have been studying the four gospels. We have learned that the identity of Jesus Christ is a mystery. Some people just ponder and they scratch their head. Oh, do I believe or do I not believe? It's, it's, just, it's just something. It's a mystery. The purpose of the book of Matthews is to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed and promised eternal king. I tell you, I want his anointing over my life when I get up and, and, and teach or preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I, I realize I can do nothing without him, but I can do all things. Uh, Psalms, uh, what is it? Help me, Holy Spirit. It'll come back to me. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. We have learned that Jesus is the greatest teacher. Week before la last, we talked on him being the greatest teacher. Tonight, we will not only have learned that Jesus is the greatest teacher, but he is a healer. He heals a man from leprosy. Verse 1 through 3 of Matthew 8, get your Bibles, reads as follows. It said, when Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And a leper came up to him and bowed down before him, saying, this man had leprosy all over his body. And he bowed down before the king. And, and he said, and then him saying, he said, Lord, he recognized who Jesus was. He said, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to make me clean. He already showed his faith. He said, you can make me clean, meaning you can make me well. Mm -hmm. Jesus reached out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing be clean. He showed his authority. He said, I am willing because of that man's faith. He said, and then he said, I am willing. He said, be clean. Immediately, his leprosy was cleaned. He was made whole. Beloved, leprosy was a terrible disease because there was no, was no known cure. We have diseases now that there's no known cure. You see, in Jesus' day, the Greek word for leprosy was used for a variety of similar diseases. And some forms were contagious. Some of them, some forms of them were contagious. For those who contracted the contagious type, a priest would declare them unclean and banish them from their home and their city. Mm. They were sent, uh, sent to, a, to live in a community with others who had the disease until they either got better or died. Can you imagine? Woo, Jesus. 
Yet when this man who had leprosy begged Jesus to heal him, he, he, he begged and he said, if, in other words, I can imagine in my mind, he said, if it be thy will, uh, uh, Jesus, heal me. He knew who he was. He showed, his, he showed him his faith. He said uh, they were sent to a, they were sent to a community with others who had the same disease, but he saw Jesus and he begged him. Mm -hmm. So my sisters and brothers, sin is also incurable is an incurable disease. Mm -hmm. And we all have it. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh huh. Only Jesus healing touch can miraculously take away our sin and restore us to real living. Only Jesus can. Beloved, I remember when I used to smoke. Yes, I used to smoke cigarettes. Uh-huh. I remember, and I was going to church. I was in the choir and loving faith. And I asked God, I said, God, help me with these cigarettes because, Lord, I enjoy it. See, this place, that's pleasure, you know. People can, you know, they smoke. I don't believe, you know, go, smoking a cigarette gonna make, you know, cause you to go to hell. But I'm just saying, I had a desire to quit. I wanted to quit because I knew it wasn't healthy for me, but it wasn't easy. So, so some would say it's sin, some would not. However, it was a process. Then one morning I got up and I stopped because of God, Jesus Christ. He knew my heart. Good, good afternoon, Sister Pastor, anointed one. <laughs> Linda Face all welcome, welcome. So only Jesus healing touch can miraculously take away our sin and restore us to real living. We have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. He restores us. Hallelujah. He restores our soul. No matter what's going on around us. We have the peace because we have a knowing in our spirit. Amen. Beloved, I must ask you, have you had a yearning desire for Jesus healing touch to where it restores you to, re to real living? Have you had that desire? However, first, just like a person with leprosy, we must come to the realization of our inability to care, uh, 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 cure ourselves. And ask for Jesus' saving help. We know that we, uh, God has given us the authority to do this and strength to do that. We really don't have any authority. But we can, he gives us the free will. That's the thank you, Holy Spirit. But when we come, hallelujah, to the realization of our inability to cure ourselves and ask for Jesus' saving help. Oh, God. We, we, we own to something then. <laughs> we realize that every, everything, he's in control of everything. Hallelujah. Verse 4 of Matthew 8. Hallelujah. Reads as thus. It says, and Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one about this, but go show yourself to the priest for inspection. The man who had leprosy, they had to go to the priests and show themselves to be restored, hallelujah, back to their homes. And he said, so verse four, he said, and Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one about this, but go show yourself to the priest for inspection and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony, meaning a evidence to them of your healing. Uh -huh. Beloved, the law required a person healed of leprosy to be examined by the priests. Jesus, Jesus wanted this man to give his story firsthand to the priest to prove that his leprosy was completely gone so that he could be restored to his community. Jesus demonstrated that he was and is the miracle worker. Have you ever worked a miracle in your life? When you just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul cries out, hallelujah. That's what he does. He restores our soul. He, he gives you peace which surpasses all understanding. God is a good God. He is a faithful God. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. Can you say amen with me? Oh, glory. Verse 5 through 6 of Matthew goes on to say this. 
as Jesus went to uh, into uh, Capernaum, a centurion came up to him. See, he's traveling all over, hallelujah. Uh, 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 came up to him, begging him for help and saying, he, they knew who he was, said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed. Now, a centurion came to him. He said, my servant, he thought enough of his servant, but he knew about Jesus. Ha! He said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed with intense and terrible tormenting pain. My sisters and brothers, the centurion could have let many obstacles stand between him and Jesus. He could have. Like pride, doubt, money, language, distance, time. He could have. Self-sufficiency. Uh-huh. Power in our race. But he didn't. Beloved, if, if he did not let these barriers block his approach to Jesus, we shouldn't either. Hallelujah. We should not let any barrier block us uh -huh, from Jesus. I have a question for you. For you to ask yourself, uh -huh, what blocks, say, say to you, say, self, what blocks me from coming to you, Jesus? What blocks me from coming to you? Because you know what? Your, your, the Bible said our righteousness are as filthy rags. You say, well, pastor, what's the use? We just got to humble ourselves and say, Lord, help me in my weakness. Lead and guide me. I need you, God. I can't make it without you. What must I do to be saved? He paid the price. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and I. But on the third day, he rose again. All he wants us to do is accept that. Romans 10 and 9, confess and believe. Hallelujah. It's a gift from God. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. We can't work for it. Woo, God. Say it with me. Jesus wants to build a relationship with me. That's what he wants to do. He wants to build a relationship with you. It's a process. Verses 7 through 10 of Matthew 8. Jesus and the Satarian are having a conversation. They're still having a conversation. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the Satarian replied. This is what he said. He said, but the Satarian replied to him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come up under my roof. But only say, Hallelujah. The word. I come by to tell you tonight that Jesus Christ, all he have to do is say or speak a word and the situation can be changed. Many times I've talked to God when I was going to Duke and all of this was going on with my brain. I said, God, it can, all you have to do is speak a word. Who? If it's your will, God, because the last I checked, the brain is what operates everything. So, Lord, if it be thy will, but not my will, your will be done. Have you ever been to that place in your life? So Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied to him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man subject to authority of a higher rank with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who were following him, I tell you truthfully, I have not found such great faith as this with anyone in Israel. Oh, glory to your name, Father. Beloved, a centurion was a career military officer uh -huh, in the Roman army with control over soldiers. Roman soldiers in particular were hated by the Jews for their typical mistreatment oppression and ridicule of Jewish people. Yet this hatred 
uh, this hated Gentile's faith amazed Jesus. Uh huh. And it was out to shame the popist pity of many of the Jewish religious leaders. We're talking about religious leaders, not relationship. Jesus told the crowd that many religious Jews who should be in the kingdom will be excluded because of their lack of faith. Uh huh. In, in drenched in their religious traditions, they could not accept Jesus and his new message. Uh huh. Some people don't want to accept change. Beloved, we must be careful not to become so set in our religious ways that we think we know all about God and then expect him to work only in our specific way, in our specific way. I come by to tell you, since I've been walking with Jesus, we think he come in one way and it come a whole different way in the midst of chaos. God can do whatever he want to do, how he want to do it, hallelujah, because he is the creator. And let me share something else. He can use anyone he desires to use. The one we think he might use will, might not even be the one. He even in the Bible, the Bible said he used the ass of a donkey. Who to get who glory? Come on back, pimps. So we must be careful not to become so set in our religious ways that we think all, know all about God and then expect him uh -huh, to work only in our specific ways. We should not allow our mindset, beloved, and strong opinions, uh-huh, we all have one, limit our faith in God. If you agree with me, type amen or say amen. <laughs> Glory to God. In verse 11 through 12 of Matthews 8, it makes us aware of this, and this is what he says. He says, I saw, I say to you that many Gentiles would come from east and west and would sit down to feast at the table." and enjoy God's promises with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven because they accepted me as Savior. Verse 12, while the sons and heirs of the kingdom, the descendants of Abraham, who would not recognize me as the Messiah, isn't there something? Would be thrown out into the outer darkness in that place which is greater removed from the kingdom. There would be weeping and sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth in distress and anger. The East and the West, beloved, stand for the whole earth. The East and the West stand for the whole earth. All the faithful people of God will be gathered to feast with the Messiah. Isaiah 25, if you would like to turn there. Isaiah 20, 25, verse 6. Hallelujah. All the faithful people of God will be gathered together to feast with the Messiah. Mm. Isaiah 25 verse 6 is evident of this. And it reads as thus. It said, on this mountain, meaning Zion, the Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all people to welcome. Oh, Lord God. To, to welcome will prepare a lavish banquet for all people to welcome his reign on earth. A banquet of aged wines, choice pieces flavored with marrow, of refined aged wines. However, this message came as a shock because they were too wrapped up. He said, he said, he was telling us he was going to have a banquet for all the believers. Uh-huh. But some of them were so wrapped, was shocked. This message came to me, to them as a shock because they were too wrapped up in their own affairs and destiny. Don't be wrapped too wrapped up that you're not listening attentively to the word of God. Mm -hmm. In claiming God's uh, promises for ourselves, we must never apply them so uh, uh, personally or culturally, beloved, that we forget to see what God wants to do to reach all the people he loves. Stay in fellowship with him. Continue to commune with him. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his job in your life, to lead and guide you, 
to help you in your weakness. And when you don't know what to pray, he said he's sitting on the right hand of the father, making intercession on your behalf with groans and moanings that words could not utter. He's watching us. He loves us. He said he wished that none should perish, that all should have eternal life. Furthermore, Matthew's, uh, Matthew emphasized this universal thing. Jesus' message is for everyone. Jesus' message is for everyone. The Old Testament prophet knew this. Prophets knew this. Malachi was one that knew that Jesus' message was and is for everyone. Malachi 1 verse 11 makes us aware of this. It said, for from the rising of the sun, even to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations. In every place, incense is going to be offered to my name. And a great grain offering that is pure for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hope. He could be great in your life today. If you accept him as Savior and Lord, he lives on the inside of you. And his name is Jesus. His name is great, according to Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. Beloved, this is a theme that can be heard throughout the Old Testament. God's name will be great among the nations. God had a chosen people, the people of Israel, through whom he planned to save and bless the entire world. Through them, hallelujah. He would show the world what it was like and how people should live with God. Today, God still wants to save and bless the world through all who believe in him, Jews and Gentiles alike. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, hallelujah, glory. The church is now his chosen place and he is our pure offering to the Lord is our new life in Christ. I come by to tell you, my sisters and brothers, the church is so, as you know, the church is so different now. This is a time, hallelujah, that we have to know that we know that we know that we are the church. Yes, going to church is good because the Bible says, fail not to assemble yourself with one another, but exalting one another, even the more as we see the day approaching. So some of us are not in a church building right now, but I come by to tell you, you got to know that you know that you are the church. He's interested in building a relationship with us so we can stand steadfast, unmovable, abounding in him, praying and seeking his face. Who oh God, continue to pray your concerns to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you through his word. He's a man that he cannot lie. He will do it. I have a question for you. Are you available to God to be used in making his name honored by the nations? You can be. You can be. Beloved, this mission begins in our homes. Hallelujah. And our neighborhoods. But it doesn't stop there. We must work and pray so that God's name will be honored everywhere. If you agree with me, say amen. But many Jewish leaders in the time of Jesus chose to ignore it. Everyone has to choose to accept or reject, reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no one can become part of God's kingdom on the basis of heritage or connections. Oh, Jesus. We have to come freely to the throne of grace ourselves, allow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will do his job. Mm -hmm. Having Christian parents is a wonderful blessing, but it won't guarantee you eternal life. Mm. I remember Grandma Neal, even as a small child, she was saved, had the greatest heart. And I can remember her love right now at 57 years old. And I was a little bitty girl when she died. Those things Stick with you when you're small. Amen. That love, Christian woman. But her salvation was not for me. I had to get to know Christ for myself. Amen. This is what Matthew was talking about here. Uh-huh. 
You must decide for yourself to believe in and follow Jesus. Amen. Verse 13 through 15 goes on to share, share Jesus' continued conversation with the satarian and his continued healing power. God is the greatest teacher. He is a healer. Amen. And he walks with authority. He is the authority. He's everything. <laughs> Verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done for you as you have believed. Hallelujah. And the servant was restored to health at that very hour. When Jesus went to went into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law laying sick in bed with a fever. He touched her hand. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and served him. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you get connected to the, to the lifeline, you want to serve. You become more like him. Hallelujah. Beloved Peter's mother-in-law gives us a beautiful example to follow. Her response to Jesus touch was to wait on Jesus and his disciples immediately. Has God ever helped you through a dangerous uh, or difficult situation? If so, you should ask, how can I express my gratitude? Lord, how can I express my gratitude? Because God has promised us all the rewards, hallelujah, of his kingdom. We should look for ways to serve him and his followers now. We should look for ways to follow him. Uh-huh and his followers. Verse 16 through 17 of Matthew 8, Jesus continues to demonstrate his healing power and his authority over unclean spirits. And it reads as thus. It says, when evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons. You say, pastor, that's not real. Okay, keep walking with me. Uh-huh. He said, when evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and he cast out the evil spirits with a word and restored to help all who were sick, exhibiting his authority at, as the Messiah, so that he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities. This is what the prophet Isaiah said. He said, he himself took our infirmities upon himself and carried away every." and carried away our diseases, meaning Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross for you and I, he took on our infirmities, hallelujah, oh, glory, onto himself and carried away our diseases. Matthew continues to show Jesus a kingly, a kingly nature. As we have just read in verse 5 and 15 of Matthew 8, through a single touch, Jesus, Jesus healed. He has all power in his hands. When he spoke a single word, evil spirits fled his presence. Beloved, Jesus has authority over all evil powers and all earthly diseases. He also has the power and authority to conquer sin, sickness, and evil consequences of living in a fallen world. But in the future, hallelujah, when God removes all sin, there will be no more sickness in there. Do you believe it? Take, I believe it. Hallelujah. Jesus healing miracles were a taste of what the whole world will one day experience in God's kingdom. Verses 18 through 20 of Matthew 8 makes us aware that discipleship will be tested. I have a question for you. Are you his disciple? Are you his disciple? Well, I come by to let you know and we get ready to study. It will be tested. I am his disciple, and it's been tested time and time again. People don't believe. What is she doing? What she thinks she's doing? She ain't call, you know what I'm saying? I don't have to hear it. The, 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 the Holy Spirit will let you hear it. You'll hear it in the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 18 through 20 of Matthew 8. It says, now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cast off uh, for the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Verse 19. Then on his way to board the boat, a scribe who was a respected and authoritative interpreter of the law came and said to him, Master, I will accompany you as your student. Wherever you go, Je wherever you go, Jesus replied to him, Foxes have holes. This is what he said. 
He said, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. He said, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Have you ever been in a position where you had nowhere to lay your head? This is Jesus Christ talking to him. his disciple. One of the, he said, he said, I want to go where you go. But Jesus replied to him, foxes have holes to go in and birds of the air have nests. He said, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. As some may know, following Jesus is not always easy or comfortable. Often it comes at great cost and sacrifice with no earthly rewards or security. Jesus didn't have a place to call home. You may, you may find that following him costs you popularity. Mm -hmm, amen. Friendships, leisure, time, or treasured habits. But while the cost of following Jesus is high, the values of being his disciple is even higher. Beloved, discipleship is an investment that lasts for eternity and yields incredible rewards. If you agree with me, say amen. It costs us popularity. Sometimes you feel all alone. But God, you have it's of great eternal value being his disciple. Hallelujah. Verse 21 through 22 of Matthew 8 goes on to say this. He said, another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury. This is what he said. Listen to this. So he, he, he's seeking disciples. And he comes across this one here. And in verse 21 said, another of the disciples says to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father, collect my inheritance. But Jesus said to him, follow me, believing in me as master and teacher and allow the spiritually dead to bury their own dead. You some would say that Jesus Christ was being a look inconsiderate or cold. No, he is the creator. This disciple may not have been asking for permission to go to his father's funeral, but rather to put off following Jesus until his elderly father died. Perhaps he was not the firstborn son and wanted to be sure to claim his inheritance. Maybe he didn't want to face his father's wrath if he left the family business to follow a traveling preacher. Whether his concern was financial security, family approval, or something else, he did not want to commit himself to Jesus yet. Jesus, however, would not accept his excuse. Hallelujah. Jesus was always direct with those who wanted to follow him. Keep walking with him. He made sure they counted the cost and set aside any conditions they might have for following him. As God's son, Jesus did not, hallelujah, hesitate to demand completely. Uh, uh, he, who, he didn't hesitate. He didn't demand them. He commanded them. Amen. He commanded. I believe he demanded obedience to him. His direct challenge forces us to ask ourselves about our own priorities in following him. The decision to follow Jesus, beloved, should not be put off. Nothing should be placed over and above a total commitment to living for him. Do you agree with it? Say amen or type amen. Verse 23 through 27 goes on to say this of Matthew's 8. He said, when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a violent storm arose on the sea so that the boat was being covered by the waves. Can you imagine? The boat is being covered by the waves, but Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. Um, he said to them, why are you afraid? You men of little faith, 
Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was at once a great and wonderful calm, a perfect peacefulness. The men wondered in amazement saying, what kind of man is this, is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? You know, I tell you, they didn't see all the, they're walking with Jesus. And they didn't see all the miracles he has uh, performed. And fear just came over them because this was a different, different trial, different test, so to speak. I <laughs> Hallelujah. Although the, the disciples had witnessed many miracles, mm -mm, they panicked in the storm. As experienced sailors, they knew it's danger. They knew what they did not know was that Jesus could control the forces of nature. But love, we often encourage storms in our lives where we feel God can't or won't work. Mm. However, say however with me, however, when we truly understand who God is, we realize that he controls both the storm of nature and the storms of the troubled heart. Jesus' power uh, Jesus, the power that calmed this storm can also calm us, can also help us deal with problems we face. Hallelujah. And beloved, he is with us. He's always with us. Jesus is willing to help if we only ask him. Just humble yourself. Just ask him for his help. We should never discount his power, even in terrible trials. If you agree with it, say amen. Verses 28 of Matthew 8, Jesus continues to demonstrate his authority. And it reads as thus. It says, when he arrived at the outer side in the country of, of the Gardarians, two, two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs met him. They were so extremely fierce and violent that no one could pass by that way. They were demon possessed. Sisters and brothers, demon possessed people are under control of one or more demons. Demons are fallen angels who joined Satan in his rebellion against God and are now evil spirits under Satan's control. And they go to and fro seeking whom they may devour. They help Satan tempt people to sin and have great destructive powers. But whenever they are confronted by Jesus, they lose their power. <laughs> These demons recognized Jesus as God's son, but they didn't think they had to obey him. Well, I come by to tell you, my sisters and brothers, if you have accepted Christ as Savior of, and Lord of your life, you have that same power because he tells us in his word that greater works we would do, hallelujah, than they did back then when his spirit resides on the inside of you. Just stand on his word, amen? Beloved, just believing in him. But wait a minute, hold on. I lost my place in my notes. That's all right. <laughs> But whenever they are confronted by Jesus, they lose their power. These demons recognize Jesus as God's son, but they didn't think they had to obey him. Beloved, just believing is not enough. Believing in Christ is just not enough. Faith is more than belief. By faith, you accept Jesus. What Jesus, Jesus received him as the only one who can save you from sin and follow him by obeying his commands. Beloved, according to ceremonial laws, the two men that Jesus encountered were unclean. And according to my studies, they were unclean in three ways. Number one, they were Gentiles, meaning non-Jews. So they considered them under the ceremonial law as unclean. They were demon possessed and they lived in the tombs. However, Jesus helped them anyway. God loves you. He loves me. He wished that none should perish, that all shall have eternal life. Jesus give a great example here that we should not turn our backs on people who are unclean or repulsive or to us or who violate our moral standards and religious beliefs. Instead, we must 
realize that every human individual is a unique creation. We all unique and different. We're all a creation of God needing to be touched by his love. The greatest gift is love. Amen. Amen. Verse 29 through 31 of Matthew 8. And it reads this thus. It says, and they screamed out, talking about them demons. What business do you, do we have in common with each other, son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time of judgment? So they knew about the judgment day. Some distance from, from them, a large herd of pigs were gazing. The demons began begging him. If you drive us out and send us in the herd of pigs. The Bible tells us that at the end of the world, the devil and presumably his fallen angels will be thrown into the lake of of burning uh, sulfur, according to Revelation 20, verse 10. However, when the demons asked if Jesus had come to torment them before the appointed time, this was evident, beloved, that they knew God would judge them in the future. They know. They just choose. <laughs> it's foolish. Verse 32 through 32, 33 of Matthew 8, Jesus demonstrates once again his authority. And this is what he says. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture that comes to my mind. He, he tells us you have the authority to shred on serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by no means shall harm you. We just have to walk in our authority. Verse 32 through 33 of Matthew 8. And he said to them, go. So they came out of the men and went into the pigs. And the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and died in the water. The herdmen, herdsmen ran away and went to the city and reported everything, including what had happened to the men under the power of demons. Beloved, when the demons entered the pigs, they drove the animals into the sea. The demons' action proved that their destructive intent. Demons have destructive intent. My sisters and brothers, if they could destroy the men, they would destroy the pigs. Jesus' action, my, by contrast, shows the value he places on each human life. Mm. Verse, last verse 34 reads as follows. It said, and the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And as soon as they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Why were they begging? Why do, they, why do you think the people begged Jesus to leave their region? Region. They begged him to leave their region. Beloved, unlike their own pagan uh, gods, they served pagan gods. Jesus could not be contained, controlled, or appeased. Mm -hmm. Some people like to be appeased. <laughs> they feared Jesus' supernatural power, a power that they had never witnessed. They feared it. And they were upset about losing a herd of pigs more than they were glad about the deliverance of the demon-possessed men. Mm. Some people are caught up more in their things. Ask yourself. I'm going to give you something to ask yourself. Am I more concerned about poverty or programs or things more than people? Mm. Beloved, as human beings, we are creating God's image. And have eternal value. How foolish and yet how easy it is to value possessions, uh huh, investments, and even animals above human life. Mm. Question for the believers. I have a question for the believers. Would you rather have Jesus leave you than finish his work in you? You say, what do you mean? Pastor, would you rather have Jesus to leave you than finish the work, his work in you? For the non-believer, allow Jesus to begin a work in you. If you don't know him tonight, this is the night to accept him as Savior and Lord of your life. He loves you. 
I tell you, I thank God for each and every one that comes on and listen to the word of God and even get your Bibles, get your coffee or whatever you're doing in your home. And let's study the word of God because that lets God know first. Jesus Christ lets him know that you want to build a relationship with him. You want to get in fellowship with him. So he, his spirit, his, the Holy Spirit can lead and guide you in your life. And you can have the peace which surpasses all understanding that his word talks about. If you do, you, you're on your way to heaven. And the way is looking out here in this world, we have to know that we know that he is our Savior. Do you know him as Savior and Lord? So he can start you on your assignment tonight. I want to give you the best invitation. Hallelujah. The best gift that you will ever receive from anyone. And it's the gift of salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shall be saved. Confess and believe. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. After listening to this word and just hearing all the miracles that Jesus Christ did, I want to experience his presence. I, I confess that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for me. But on the third day, he rose again. I believe it. I confess it and I believe that he rose again by faith in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Welcome into the family of God. And if you have been on this journey and the pressures of life or situations, you allow, I have allowed to take your eyes off of Jesus. He said, I have no other God before him. Ask him to help you. He said, tonight you can repent. Acts 3 verse 19. He said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing will come from him, come from the Lord, not Pastor Charlene, not Bishop, not no one, but the Lord, the creator, the one that's going to come back the second time as the conqueror. See, the first time he came as the, as the lamb died, but he rose again. Amen. So say, Lord, I repent. I make a conscious decision to change my attitude. Help me, Lord, in my weakness and the decisions I'm making. God, help me. I repent, God, and accept your time of refreshing tonight, according to Acts 319. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome back into the family of God. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Patricia Marsh Wardles, thank you for being on tonight. Natasha Luther, good to see you on. I saw you on, got your mom and you on. I love that. I loved it. Keith Burrell, thank you for being on. Linda Faye Sauls, that oh God, prophet right there. I met her and she just began to tell me all about myself. I said, Lord Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uncle Daniel, thank you for being on consistently. Uh, Eddie Fields, thank you so much. And the ones that's on the prayer line, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on. Sister, one out in... Uh, Making Georgia, thank you so much for being on tonight. To God be the glory, blessed be the name of the Lord. God is a good God. He is a faithful God. There is no one like him. We serve a Prince of Peace, Abba Father. He knows the beginning. He, know, he knows the ending. Amen. If you have a comment, the ones on the line, if you have a comment, press star six, and we would love to hear from you. I see your comments on Facebook Live. Thank you so much. Do you have a comment on the line? We used to do this all the time. Press star six, and we would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, we will not hold you up. We just thank God for you tuning in tonight. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word with your people. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Father, we ask God that you continue to look over Brother Eddie, God, as he deals 
with the cancer, God. Lord, we pray, God, for your healing power going throughout his body in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace be still. Lord, touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Isaiah 53, verse 5 and 6, you said in your word that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we were healed. Over 2,000 years ago, God, we thank you for your, your, your spiritual healing, healing our soul that's going to live forever. But Lord, we just give you glory and honor and praise for the physical healing that you do it, that you uh, work in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls, renewing our minds through your word, God. Lord, there is no one like you, God. We serve a mighty God. Help the believers, God, to stick together because we serve the same mighty God, Prince of Peace. And your name is Jesus. Oh, help us, God, in our weakness, God to set aside jealousies and love one another. Because you said in your word, hallelujah, the greatest gift is love. We can have faith and hope, but the greatest is love. In the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. So Lord, let us demonstrate your word. Not just be hearers, but, but do doers of your word. Lord, help us to cast all like cares on you. Because we know that you carry for us. Lord, you tell us in your word that weeping may endure for a night, but you promise joy will come in the morning. Lord, we bring our children to you, God. All our children. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy them. But I pray that the angel of the Lord will cap around them, put an angel of the Lord around them, protecting them, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. That's new every morning. Oh God, you said in your word that one will put a thousand to flight and two will put 10,000 to flight. I pray whatever the need is, God, for the ones that's under the sound of my voice, that you will supply all their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and every entity of their lives. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for another opportunity to study your word, to become more like you, God. Help us, God. We need you. We can't make it without you. In the name that's above every name, you said in your word, God, that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we confess that you're Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Until Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m., have a blessed rest of the week. Good night. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Blessed be the name.